Hey, you guys, welcome to episode number four. This is episode four of The Long Ride with Wild Ponies. Can you believe it? I'm excited. We are Doug and Talisha from the band Wild Ponies, and we are so excited to bring to you The Long Ride with Wild Ponies featuring Jim Lauderdale. Jim is a kind of a hero of ours and has been for a long time. I've loved Jim's songwriting forever and I love the way he's handled himself in the business and and he's just he's got one of those careers that is just really kind of uh, something we've admired for a long time. 31, 31 records. records. It's amazing. It might be 32 now. He might <laughs> Maybe he's <laughs> he put out a few released. since we recorded it. You're probably right. It's probably he's true. Probably four. It's probably he 40. He is prolific. It's, it's insane. It's true. It's true. Well, we're excited to take you into the Bowery Vault where we recorded this session with Jim Lauderdale only using an ear trumpet labs myrtle microphone that's the only sound you're going to hear is something that comes right through the ear trumpet labs myrtle microphone it's a great little machine and we're going to take you right there in just a second we're incredibly thankful for our sponsor for this show as usual lurch term 1917 an amazing company making beautiful journals and the russell nashville we'll talk about both of them more here in a little bit but for now let's just jump in and and uh, let Jim play some songs. Here we go. Live from the Bowery Vault, The Long Ride with Wild Ponies, Jim Lauderdale. So you guys give him a big hand and welcome Jim Lauderdale to the Bowery Vault stage. Thank you. You've got a good imagination. No one else can see It's like a three-way conversation Between you and you and me You always speak to me in color Vivid as the day is long And I could listen to you talking Till the rest have gone home It the shock of recognition Traveling up and down my spine Or a little piece of the premonition That got mixed up with mine There's lots of different kinds of people It's best not to interrupt Just leave them to their own devices They're so easy to corrupt Well, it's no surprise that you don't like You will not hide away It's no surprise that you don't like You will not hide away Good imagination No one else can see It's like a three-way conversation Between you and you and me Well, it's no surprise That you don't like You will not hide away It's no surprise That you don't like no, you will not hide away Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Wow. What a crowd out there tonight. Wow. Goodness gracious. Well, gosh, I'll tell you what. Thanks for coming out this evening. How's everybody up there in the balcony? All right. 
Oh, great. Well, it's good to be here. And uh, Doug and Talisha, thank y'all so much for, for having us and everybody here at the Bowery Vault. And um, that song, the, that first one I did, that's kind of my Willie Nelson has Whiskey River and I have three-way conversation. That's my song that kind of helps make me feel comfortable and relaxed and kind of like everything is okay in the universe. And just for that three minutes, everything is okay in the world. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but, uh, but here's a song that uh, I'll go ahead and do this one. I, I love to do this every time I do a gig, just about. And it's a, a tribute song I wrote to uh, George Jones and Graham Parsons because they really influenced me a lot. And uh, I, I'd moved out to California to be near the places where Graham had trod. And uh, I was reading a book by a guy named Sid Griffin about Graham. And there was a story in there about how he had a party one time and he was playing George's records for people who'd never seen him or heard him. And uh, he started crying and he said, that's the king of broken hearts. So when I read that, this song came out. <laughs> The king of broken hearts doesn't ask much from his friends And he has quite a few of them They know he will understand That's just the way it goes the king of broken hearts doesn't know he's a king He's trying to forget other things Like some old chilly scenes He's walking through alone he talks to angels and the stars start to spin He thinks of troubles that he's gotten in He recalls how his heart got broken And how it's still that way the king of broken hearts is so sad and wise He can smile while he's crying inside But we know he'll be brave tonight Cause he's the king of broken hearts And the stars start to spin He thinks of troubles that he's gotten in He recalls how his heart got broken And how it's still that way The king who broken hearts thinks that he's an old fool He's a little bit like me and you So what's a king like that supposed to do With all that blue time We know he'll be brave tonight Cause he's a king of broken hearts He's a king of broken hearts Thank you
Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jim Lauderdale just played King of Broken Hearts right here in front of all of us. But we want to we want to take you back because this show's called The Long Ride. Like we want to take you back to North Carolina. Okay. In the early days. Okay. And we want to take you back to do you remember your very first paid gig? Hmm. I guess I Tips was count. I, I was in um, high school, a junior in high school, and I had a duo with a guy named Rick Bowley. He played guitar and I played banjo. And um, we so, won't hold that against you. Yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, so yeah, and, and we sometimes we had a guitar player play with us named Zan McLeod. And I really looked up to those guys a lot and they really helped me a lot. Was that when you were in Winston at the North Carolina uh, School of No, York? that was I was uh, living out in the country in Chapel Hill. Okay. And went to a school my last two years of high school called Carolina Friends School. Right. And um, but I wanted to be a banjo player. And you do you know, still play banjo? I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna start again actually, but I'm really rusty every time I've tried to. I never. I only got to a certain level, and I kind of knew I was never gonna be. Uh, Innovator, yeah, and uh, so I just scrugs are old time. Uh, I did scrugs, and I was kind of learning the uh, Keith style. Yeah, yeah. This was, and you guys, this goes so I, far, but this is pre Bela. Yeah, right. I mean, this was so far back. You know, this was, uh, you know, it's just. <laughs> I want to. What, what about favorite venues through the years? Places you played that you um, really liked a lot. Well, let's see. Uh, the Bowery Vault. That's a great, great, great choice. Uh, the Bowery Vault. Yes. Um, the, Ry the Ryman. The Ryman. Yeah. Come on. The Station yeah. Inn. Yep. You know, those are some of my favorites. Uh, the American Legion, post '82. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Yeah. That we yeah. we I tell you we've seen you play at the Legion a couple times. When we're in town, if we're on Tuesday night, we head over to the Legion to check yeah, that out. Yeah, we do. And I wanted to ask you how that feels. You're a songwriter, and you play a lot of songs for people, like in a room like this, where people sit down and listen to you play your songs. And they listen very at at attentively. You know, they're paying attention, mm -hmm. they're listening to your songs. At the Legion, you look out and it's a sea of people spinning around and dancing. It, and It's a sea of people spinning around dancing until I finish the song and I go, wait a minute, stop it. <laughs> sit down and listen to me. <laughs> stop dancing, listen. <laughs> no, but really, how does that how does that feel to kind of go through the life as a songwriter and then wind oh, up? Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's really a lot fun. of fun. Yeah. 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 You almost feel when you're playing at that kind of a thing, if they're not dancing, yeah, then you think, hey, wait a minute. Exactly. You're thinking of the next tune yeah. you need to do yeah. to get them dancing mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Well, the beauty of tonight is you can play whatever you want, and people can dance. There's a little space right there if people do want to yeah. shuffle their feet. They're welcome. That's right. But you can also play just you and this Ear Trumpet Lab microphone. Mm. Out I love the these table. Ear Trumpet mics. We do, too. I, they're sponsoring this series, and they're, they're great. We love them to death. They're, I, I, they're I've got a couple of them, and I use them whenever I can. Yeah. Well, who wants to hear more from Jim Lauderdale? More songs! More All right. songs! Play something you want to play. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, well, here's the uh, title song from that record, and I wrote it with a singer-songwriter originally from Texas. His name is Mondo Signs. I bet some of y'all heard of Mondo. And he's, he spells that S-A-E-N-Z, and he's a fine songwriter, and we wrote this late one night. Woke up with our hands on our heads Slid off the wrong side of the bed It's sad when it's not the same No point in passing round the blame The things that we used to do and We didn't get to Time flies don't it seem like a dream come between when it could be cause Time flies Don't it seem like a dream come between when it could be cause 
After the changes There ain't no turning back Until the curtain In the early days when we were wandering through the maze Still searching for our stroke of luck Guess we're all still growing up If it's not too much to lose Wanna hear some different news Time flies don't it seem like a dream come between when it could be cause Time flies Don't it seem like a dream come between when it could be cause After the changes There ain't no turning back the different stages and played a different act to our amazement we almost made it until the curtain Like a dream come between when it could be called Time flies Don't it seem like a dream come between when it could be called Thank you Well, there's Jim Lauderdale from the Bowery Vault, a song he co-wrote with Mando Science. So great. Yeah, pretty amazing. So huh? great. He is such a great writer. Yeah, he is. And a great singer, and too. a great singer. Yeah. Did y'all hear him do that song for George Jones? Oh, it's so good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have more from Jim in just a minute, but first I want to talk about our sponsor, the Russell Hotel in East Nashville. It's amazing. It is so beautiful. It's a gorgeous space. The property is stunning. It is a converted church. It used to be a church, and they have um, kept their spirit of giving. Yeah, they've got this program called Rooms for Rooms, and if you stay there, they give a generous portion of every stay to one of the several homeless missions, uh, National Rescue Mission, Shower Up, Room at the Inn, or People Loving Nashville, to provide rooms and showers for people who are experiencing homelessness in Nashville. It's, it's amazing. It's kind of amazing. Like, the average weekend stay mm -hmm. at the Russell provides like 16 nights in a bed. It's amazing. It's a, it's a good program. Or 100 free showers, or 30 free meals. So you should go check it out. Go to russellnashville.com and you can book a room there. And you can even get a discount using the discount code Wild Ponies if you want. Amazing. And not only that, it's a gorgeous hotel, like we said. Mm -hmm. And we have taken the whole thing over this summer. We're going to be there the entire weekend, the last weekend of July into the first weekend of August. The seventh annual Wild Ponies Trail Ride. Can't wait. Happening right here Can't in Nashville, wait. Tennessee. There are still rooms available, but they are going fast. They are going quickly. So I encourage you to go to wildponies.net and pick up a room and come hang out with us this summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. Ponies, yeah. let's ride. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> It's time for the Long Ride Gear Guide. This is a lot of fun. This is where we take <laughs> products that are good for, you know, something on the road, either traveling or motorcycles or music. Yeah. And then we rate them. And a couple of weeks ago, okay, we gave the Keurig uh, a pretty harsh review. We did. We did. We totally did. And I stand by it. <laughs> and, and people have given us some crap for Specific it. But... <laughs> they have. And our friend Laura Schneider, though, she did something about it. Laura got us a bag. She wanted to fix it. Right. You know? So she got us a bag of Petaluma coffee, the Petaluma Blues Breaker. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it from Petaluma, California. And she got us a travel pour-over system. You know, it's a Wolcock with a with 
filters and and it's a silicone BPA free with a little carabiner on the side of it and like it's a travel tiny. pour over thing. It's tiny. It's tiny. It just fits like you could fit it in your pocket, your purse, the front pocket of your backpack, your Osprey backpack. Your Osprey backpack. So that's the idea is that we could have our own coffee wherever we wanted to go and we could just avoid the whole Keurig thing. So that's what we're reviewing this week and it's pretty cool I have to say. It's amazing. We'll start with the Petaluma coffee which is amazing and it gets five horseshoes. And we're Five horseshoes. We're definitely going to stop by Petaluma coffee and hang out with them next time we're out in California and I'm looking forward to that. Now, the pour over... Uh, the Wolcock silicone BPA free pour over. I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it four horseshoes. And here's why: you can't really see, when you're pouring the water into the filter, you can't quite see down in there to see how much water or coffee is getting into your cup. Right. So you're kind of prone to overfill it a little bit. That sounds like experience talking, Doug. <laughs> and and it's it's not super sturdy like like the like the ceramic style nice pour overs. But, but it's still really cool. It's convenient. Yeah. And it's perfect. You know, I'm not going to travel with a ceramic pour over. So no, I, it's perfect for that. Four we, horseshoes. Totally. And, and then five on the Petaluma coffee, specifically the Blues Breaker. And six horseshoes for Laura for giving us this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Yeah. It's totally better than the Keurig. Way better than the Keurig. Totally. Well, let's get back to Jim Lauderdale, y'all. All right, let's do it. You know, you you released your first record in 1991. Is that right? If mm-hmm. your bio serves us directly. Um, 1991, you released a record. And through your, which was before the term Americana and the genre of Americana was a, was a thing. But you have always been that. You have always, I mean, you, you've released bluegrass records. You've released Honky Tonk records, singer-songwriter records. Grateful Dead records. Grateful Dead records. <laughs> Almost. So you, I mean, you... Which is Americana. That's Americana. Right. You know. Well, you know, even when I was a little kid, I knew that I was going to do Americana. <laughs> you know, they, I, I mean, they did, I knew there was some unknown, uncategorized genre. Yeah. But, uh... And you know, as well, I mean, I would still do the other, what you mentioned, the country, bluegrass, singer-songwriter, but I knew there was something, you know, else out there. Your relationship with your fans and with the industry, because I feel like when we talk about Americana, that genre brings about a different kind of fan than some of the other genres that we mention. So... what, how do you feel about your relationship with, with your fans and people? Well, I don't know if any of you folks out there believe in science. <laughs> but if you ever heard of a guy named Charles Darwin, whether you believe in him or not, I'm not saying that. But he had a thing about survival of the fittest. Yeah. And I think that the bluegrass country and Americana, blues, soul, singer-songwriter, folk... Fans, Roots Rock, are the survival of the fittest. I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. You know what I'm talking yes. about? And I feel, I you know, I feel this bond between them and me. I think you're kind of making a joke, but I think you're actually right. I'll oh. be honest. I think you're. I think that's. I think you're absolutely 100 spot on with that. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that how we always feel about Jim Lauderdale? You you're never can like, tell. These are such words of wisdom. But I feel like he's joking. <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about this. But I, th- I think you're t- I think you're speaking the truth. You've been a part of some legendary albums and some. Uh, you've written some hits for some amazing artists. We talked about that already. And I was looking today as I was, I was reading up on you. I was looking back. One of my favorite songs of yours. I didn't realize who it was a co-write with until today. I had seen. I, I heard the song a million times. And today I, I decided to to look it up and see who you wrote that song with. And you wrote the song, um, You'll Know When It's Right. There's not really a, cho- there's sort of a, a chorus, but it's really not exactly a verse, chorus, verse, chorus type song. It's a really weird little tune that I've always loved that you wrote with Harlan Howard. Mm-hmm. How yeah. was that? I mean, you've written other stuff with Harlan Howard as well, Harlan but, Howard? but can you talk about. Jim Lauderdale? Sure. Well, he, um, when I was getting ready to do a 
record on RCA called Whisper, mm -hmm. uh, my A and R lady Renee Bell said, "Would you like to write with Harlan Howard?" And she hooked me up also with Melba Montgomery and Jeez. and um, so Harlan and I wrote a few songs on Whisper, and then uh, we kept writing. And um, he was such a great guy; he's mm. really, really a wonderful guy. And um, I was at his office one time. He liked to write. He'd start. We'd start at ten, and then at noon. And I'd read this about him and heard about him. He'd around noon. He'd look at his watch and go, "Wow, well, what do you say we knock off for the day and go grab some lunch?" And so, <laughs> and we'd do that. And um, he had had a long career and then kind of a uh, quiet period. And then he'd had a few hits and um, you know was was enjoying a good comeback yeah and, um so um <clears throat> but but one of those times when i was there he was he was asking me about something and i said well you know this didn't work out or whatever and he said well you know you'll know when it's right and so when he said that which is what happens in the best co-writes is that all of a sudden I got these chills and he, he kept talking, you know, well, you know, you know, but as I was looking at him, you know, all I could, you know, I just had, was getting this feeling and, and I was getting this melody and I had a cassette player and I said, Har Harlan, I'm sorry, excuse me for a second, I'm getting this, <laughs> getting this melody, you know, so yeah, I got the melody and he had a legal pad and was writing and writing and, and this just kind of all came together. That's always been one of my favorite songs. I love that song so much. It's great. Well, we're not going to ask you. To, you don't have to play that one, but we would love for you to play a couple more tunes. Yeah, play a few more tunes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, try right. to, I'll try this uh, You'll Know When It's Right. All right. He's going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that you couldn't love me. But I'm grateful for your time And I know there'll come a morning When you won't be on my mind I hope that I'll always be as honest As you've always been with me I just wish that you were feeling That I was what you need Your heart wide open Hold on tight And what you find Cause baby you're the kind That only loves one time And you'll know when it's right Right. 
Cause baby you're the kind That only loves one time And you'll know when it's right When it's right You'll know When it's right Thank you Thanks so much Thank you Good old Harlan Howard, I'll tell you. When we play the Bowery Vault, when we when we do these, we like to. One of my favorite things about coming here to this show is that I get to peruse the racks and pick something out to put on for the day. Um, Look at that vest. This nice. is amazing. If you're on the radio, you can't see this. I'm sorry about that too, because it's it real is good. hot. Yeah. It's real an amazing good. vest. Um, and Dog like is wearing We should talk pants. about the elephant in the room, which is these pants. Yeah, these, it is these totally the elephant pants. in the yeah. room. Yeah. So if you've been listening to the podcast so far and sing along, you know that these pants have kind of woven a thread through. They have, yeah. Amy Spies was our first long ride, and we discovered these pants that night, yes. and I fell in love with them. And I just talked about them a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. The next one we did was Will Kimbrough, and I asked Emily and Vero if I could just wear the pants while I interviewed Will Kimber up here on the stage. And they let me wear the pants while I was up here interviewing Will right. Kimber on the stage. And then uh, the next one was Birds of Chicago. And right. I wanted the pants so bad. Right. We came back, I walked in, I walked over, and, and Vera said, I'm sorry, we sold your pants. They're gone. I had secretly arranged <laughs> for Doug to get these pants for his birthday. So come on for the pants. Yes. This is my favorite. This is my favorite part of the interview of the long ride interview because this is the speed bump speed round. round. So um, we're just gonna ask. We're gonna ask Jim questions either or. He's got to go like first. You know, first thought. Pen or pencil? Teller. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Fly or drive? Ointment. <laughs> Mountain or ocean? Mountain. Manuel or nudie? Manuel. <laughs> Fill up before or after the gaslight comes on? After. <laughs> Sunrise or sunset? Both. <laughs> Last year or next year? Both. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kreme? Neither. Oh, come on! <laughs> As a North Carolina boy, we totally thought he was gonna uh, say. Krispy Krispy Kreme. Kreme. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And last question. Whiskey or beer? Oh, beer. wait. Beer. There was one more. There was Sorry. one more? What was the other one? Last year or next year? Oh, yes, that one. Oh, you did? He said both. I missed it. Both. He's living in the moment, Jim Lauderdale. <laughs> Some more songs from Jim Lauderdale. Two more songs from Jim Lauderdale. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, I think I'll do one off of... Uh, I'll try this one. I, I haven't been... Uh, doing these out live much, but I did a record when I, I came to Nashville in 1979, and um, I wanted to hang out with George Jones and Roland White. And, and I didn't get to hang out with George, but Roland, I went down to the station inn and met him, but he was one of my bluegrass heroes and was very kind and let me sit in with him a lot, and I'd go to his house and hang out, and I was just crazy about Roland and still am. And uh, I was a big fan of Clarence White's, the, his brother that was a guitar player and listened to a lot of their records and would sing Clarence's parts. I could never play guitar and never will be able to play guitar like Clarence. But um, so anyway, after a while, I, I just wasn't, I realized I wasn't gonna be able to make it here in Nashville. And so I planned to move up to New York City and uh, where, you know, maybe there was a fresh start for country music up there, <laughs> and uh, which there actually was. And that's where I met Buddy Miller and Larry Campbell and Sean Colvin and a bunch of folks. And uh, But before I left, Roland said, hey, why don't we do a record together? So I thought, all right, this is it. I've made it 
this is this is my dream you know so we did a record in Earl Scruggs' basement and uh, and um, Marty Stewart played lead guitar and a bunch and just great players and and uh, so then when I left I sent cassettes around of the, the record and all the labels wrote me back and said hey you know we like it but you're an unknown on the scene you know but keep in touch and let us know what you know happened Hap, you know happens with you and now if anybody knows me you know that I hate rejection right you know that right and so <laughs> So anyway, I just set it aside, and I thought, well, someday I'm going to put out this record. So then when I got a record deal, finally, years later, I contacted Roland. I said, now I bet you somebody will put this out. And he said, great, well, you know, just give them the master, you know. And, and I said, oh, oh, I thought you had the, the copy of the time. He said, no, no, I thought you did. So anyway, we couldn't find it, and then... Um, so I was bummed about that, and then last year Roland sat in with me at the station inn, and as he was leaving the stage, he said, oh, by the way, my wife found a tape in the bottom of a box with our names on it. So it turned out to be that record, and, um, <clears throat> and uh, so the, it came out, um, and finally. So, uh, and I'll do a tune. On, that I wrote on it called Forgive and Forget. Forgive and forget Pretend we just met Honey, let's make up Forgive and forget I was out all night And last night too Out with a crowd But I was thinking about you Forgive and forget Pretend we just met Honey, let's make up Forgive and forget Sometimes I like to fuss And holler and yell Sometimes we like to have A good fighting spell Forgive and forget Pretend we just met Honey, let's make up Forgive and forget If we have a little few If we have a little spat If you're clawing and scratching I like a mean old cat Forgive and forget Pretend we just met Honey, let's make up Forgive and forget Honey, let's make up Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, I I hope you will forgive me if you haven't enjoyed this evening or the podcast, and I hope you will forget it if you didn't. Um, um, well, shoot, I, I don't know what to end with, but uh, um, maybe I'll do a, a, a song I wrote. Um, I went to a writer's retreat over in England last year. This guy from the group Squeeze called Chris Difford had this thing, and a bunch of writers from, from England and a few from the U.S. were over there. And, and so uh, this is a song I wrote with a gal from Lafayette, Louisiana named Sarah Dugay and uh, and I, I think it, m it might make the, the new record I'm working on so uh, but anyway uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this one I've had a great time thank you all so much for coming out tonight and, uh, and uh, thanks again for everybody at the Bowery Vault this is a great place thank you all and I'm going to I'm going to come back in the daytime, so. I'll forgive you if you don't. I'll still be here if you won't. Want to tell me that you feel the same way too. 
You could go on all night long And on and on and on Tell me anything you want I'll forgive you if you don't If you feel like jumping in I'm ready, let's begin We could give this thing a try If you want Because every now and then A woman and a man Might think their heart's at home I'll forgive you if you don't I'll forgive you if you don't Want to leave the friend zone And keep everything just the way it is Have we gotten to that stage? Are we on the same page? Can you feel the ha ha ha? I'll forgive you if you don't. If you feel like jumping in, I'm ready, let's begin. We could give this thing a try if you want. Because every now and then A woman and a man Might think their heart's at home I'll forgive you if you don't Can you feel the ho 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 I'll forgive you if you don't I'll forgive you if you don't. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. In Rotterdam. A long ride. Whoa. Amazing. <laughs> Well, there you have it, Jim Lauderdale from the Bowery Vault there in East Nashville. Isn't that cool? I'm so glad he did that song. What yeah. an honor to to record him as part of season one of The Long Ride and all through an Ear Trumpet Labs yeah. Myrtle microphone. That's amazing. I love Jim so much. He's I He's such an asset to our community. I yeah. really, you know, he did say that we could write together. No, no, we needed to make that happen. We need, we need to, to make, make that, that happen. happen. I I'm would love it. give him a call it. today. <laughs> Do it. Well, we've got the final segments of the of the long ride with wild ponies coming up in just a second. But first, we want to talk to you about Lurstrom 1917. Oh my goodness, we are in love with these journals. We really are. I left mine at home. Oh, I got. I, I just. I left mine at home, and I was on the road for a couple of days. Tulsa sent me a photograph of mine sitting on the table by the door, and you I, teared up. Didn't I did. You? I couldn't believe it. I've become so attached to it. You have. Yeah. You have. I'm using mine every day for everything, and there's so many ways that you can do it it's a it's a bullet journal and you can do the bullet journal sort of method mm-hmm. of, of planner That's use. What I'm, doing. I'm just putting everything in it it's what I'm taking to every meeting it's what I'm taking sitting down and talking over workshops and that sort of thing and I'm just putting everything in there well I'm sort of doing both because these are so nice that they come with two really beautiful bookmarks in each journal so mm-hmm. the front bookmark is what I'm using for my bullet journal to-do list type situation and I'm using the other bookmark which starts me somewhere in the middle of the book around page 100 and I'm using that just for my random uh, note taking it's so great I and I it's you great. know I love their slogan is mm-hmm. Denken mit der Hand which in German means think with the hand that's so cool and I really feel like that's what I'm doing when I'm using this journal I'm just 
writing down what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's great. You should go to wildponies.net slash TLR and you can see the show notes there and we'll give you links to all the cool places where you can get Lurstrom 1917 products. And it just makes me feel like I'm a more creative person, you know? I just, I just love it. Thinking with the hand. That's right. Very and creative. if you want to be a more creative person, guess yes. what? We have something for you. We it's do. the final segment of the Long Ride with Wild Ponies. It's the prompt. It's our creative prompt. What we want to happen here, and this is great. This is going really well. People are doing this. We want you to create something. Everyone who's listening to this, I don't know whether you think this is true or not, but it is true. If you're listening to this, you have a creative spirit. There's something in you that can create. and It may be a recipe, a poem, a haiku, a song, a dance, Anything, uh, you know, a sculpture with out of the flowers in your front yard. I don't, I don't a know. Photograph. Arrange um, some rocks. A knit, a scarf. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can, that you can capture. We've gotten some beautiful things, and the way we will find out about it is what happens when you when you when you make whatever it is you're going to make based on this prompt. We want you to post it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag PonyCast. P-O-N-Y-C-A-S-T. Hashtag PonyCast. And then we'll see it and we'll share it with other folks. And then I'll tear up every time one You'll comes tear through. tear up. That's true. Talisha, sometimes I look over at Talisha and she's crying and I'm like, oh, I guess another PonyCast came through. <laughs> so great. I, I love it so much. So the prompt this week. The is prompt is... Time Flies. Time Flies. So the give us what you got, track. people of um, one of Jim's most recent records, Time Flies, and um, I can see a lot coming through. So there you go, Time Flies. Hey, thanks for listening to episode four of The Long Ride with Wild Ponies. We really appreciate it. We really do appreciate it. Thanks so much to Lurstrom 1917. Thanks so much to the Russell Hotel Nashville. We love them. They're great. It's so great. And if you've gotten to this point of the podcast and you're like, I need more. Mm -hmm. We have something for you. What do we have? We have an extended version. The really long ride with Wild Ponies <laughs> is available on patreon.com slash wild ponies. Yeah, we've got some extra songs that we didn't put in with Jim, and we've got some extra questions that you might want to know the answers to. So, yeah, if you're interested, I'm going to go check it out. We're also covering a Jim Lauderdale song over there, and you can see all of our previous covers with Birds of Chicago, Will Kimbrough, Amy Spies, and the ones that are coming up in the future, like Kim so Ritchie. So fun. And you can, Mark Stewart. you can get on Patreon. Patreon for just a buck. Yeah, that's the lowest package. A just buck. a buck. It's easy. Nothing to it. And then you get more. You get yeah. more long ride. Also, and as we mentioned earlier, when we we're talking about the Russell, we do still have seats available for the Wild Ponies Trail Ride this summer, 7th Annual. They are selling out quickly, so go check it out at wildponies.net. And I hope we can see you here in Nashville hanging out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun that weekend is. So much. But for now, we're going to leave you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please subscribe. Leave us a good review if you like what you're hearing. There you have it. Season one, episode four of The Long Ride with Wild Ponies featuring Jim Lauderdale. Bye, y'all.